Tottenham get battered everywhere they go. Tottenham get battered everywhere they go. Good evening, everyone. How are we all doing? Welcome back to another stream on the channel. I am a day late, I know. We're here to discuss Leicester City 4, Tottenham Hotspur 1. Now, we don't, we didn't see that happening. I know I know it's 24 hours, it's more than 24 hours after the game ended, but I I was out in London on Saturday. I was watching the game on on the underground in London, so it was a bit difficult. But um, yeah, today we're here for the instant one. Not it's not very instant. We're here for the match reaction after lesser four Tottenham Hotspur one. The chat's flying already. Keep it coming. Um, going to go through some tactics and stuff tonight, and just generally our thoughts on that game for about half an hour or so. As always, so, yeah, drop a like on the stream, subscribe as well to the channel, and Leicester about boys. T the title charges is is, is commencing. But um, yeah. You yeah, I even got it going in the in, in the chat. But um, yeah, uh, what a game indeed it was. It's typical. The one game I miss is that um, top seven. Wow, uh, Leicester are massively on. Absolutely good. God, Gantrian. Uh, Leicester edits with the prop, the prime logo. What's that doing there? Get, get, get. There's, there's loads of good photos from Saturday. Uh, hello, Gray mate. Um, no sign of Kane. I know we kept him quiet, and we'll talk about that a bit later. But I thought Harry Sutar, after watching the highlights, was world class. Well, not yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's go with it. World class. Mendy, yeah, from the bolt. Uh, SK, I know I was on the tube watching the game. I, 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 I got like a notification. Mendy scored. I was like, what? Uh, SK1 was rocking, I can imagine. Um, yeah, it must have been it must have been loud. Um top top four. Um well, yeah, we'll talk. We, we have a lot we have a lot of things to discuss. I'm gonna talk about tactics tonight and why Ian Actor is thriving so much and um the, the midfield and um, defensive as well. But the main thing is why Ian Atcher is suddenly so you know, turned so well. Same team for United, 100%. And that's the thing. I, I said this before the Tottenham game. Obviously, we made one change, which was in force because of the Tillemans injury. But apart from that, just keep the same team going because it's working. The system's working. I mean, we've got players off the bench now who can come on and, and make the impact. Obviously, Vardy came on. Dennis Pratt came on as well, etc. So, um, I hate Spurs. So do I. Big confidence for United, 100%. We'll touch on the, we'll touch on United a bit later on. Uh, Tete and Christensen, hundred percent. And talking of the new signings, they've all been absolutely fantastic. But um, yeah, let's quickly go through um, some tactical stuff then from the game. So as we can see, if we go back up a little bit, this is obviously the player ratings. I won't go on about it for too much, but yeah, pretty much um, as you can see, Ian Atcher and Madison got given the highest ratings from Sofa Score, which is quite solid. Tete, the the, the lowest two. Yeah, he, he, he was quite quiet in the game, but, you know, did his job, defended quite nicely. But this left-hand side, the, this area here was was fantastic, I thought. Um, if you look at the average positions by Leicester, as you can see, we very much went down the left-hand side with Madison coming across as well. Um, Christensen and Barnes in there as well. And quickly on, on, on Christensen and Barnes, I think Christensen has really allowed Barnes to thrive. He's, he's you know, got that the defensive stability behind him and Barnes has really been allowed to excel and push on with Christensen behind him. Obviously, Christensen himself, you see him, he demands the ball win and that's what I like to see. You know, when when, when it's Thomas there, he's, he's kind of like, it's not really demanding the ball, but Christensen's there, arms out wide saying, give me the ball. And, you know, for a 20-year-old who's coming in there, leading from the back is exactly what Leicester wants to see. And it just gives the whole team so much more confidence. And for me, that's part of the reason why Harvey Barnes has been performing better in these last two games since Christensen has came in. But the main one is Kelechi and Atcher. The guy's got two goals and three assists in the last two games. Now, that is, that's incredible. Five goals and assists in two, which is crazy output, crazy output for Kelechi and Atcher. And I think the, I think the reason behind Ian Atcher thriving so much is simply because of the players around him. Obviously, you've got Ian Atcher playing in that kind of false nine position. It's similar to kind of where Firmino played for Liverpool a few years ago. But obviously, you've got Tete and you've got Barnes and obviously James Madison in that more central role. Now, obviously, when when, when you had Madison around this area on, on the right-hand side, we'll, we'll click off this quickly. Um, when, when when James Madison's predominantly started in that right-wing right -wing position, it's hard for Ian Atcher because he only run it in behind his Barnes. But now we've got Tete, Ian Atcher can, can come deep and he's got options left and right, and he got Christensen provided width as well. So, overall, I think the players around him has just really allowed Ian Atcher to come in, suit the system, and right now, he is being an absolute output machine. And if, if you quick look at Tottenham position, I haven't looked at this yet, but, yes, it's not too bad. But as you can see, it just reiterates how much Leicester went down this left-hand side, the Barnes and Christian side, um, side. And I think, you know, 
Ian Atchell is doing well, and you know we'll talk about um, Mendy and Dewsbury Hall in, in that mid in that double pivot as well. But yeah, overall you can see attacking wise Leicester coming down here and Sutar playing a bit towards Christmas. Um, sorry, Castagna as well, which is which is interesting. But um, yeah, I really just think tactically Brendan got a spot on once again. He out he out he outdone Conte really because Tottenham of course play that five at the back type of formation. And Leicester stretched him because Emerson was Emerson. He was it was Pedro Porro who was awful, and um, Perez had just started that wide. And Leicester obviously stretched it with Christensen and Castagna and Barnes and Tete. The wing backs of Tottenham were in two minds. Do I mark the run? Do, do I go for Barnes and Tete and sit back? And then obviously Christensen and, and Castagna can come on. But if you leave them two, it caused them so many issues. And he got Madison between the midfield lines. You know, it, it was absolutely spot on. I thought by Brendan, and the, obviously the, the the plays were fantastic. But I think we we need to give a lot of credit to Brendan because you know he's got his players in and he's proven his right. You know, let's be honest. So yeah, I think Brendan's done a fantastic job in there. Yeah, let's get back into the chat. Keep it going, boys and girls. Um, if you've got any questions or anything, just feel free to get them in there. Um, let me try and get back up to where it was. Duh, duh, duh. I think it's about here, isn't it? Uh, confident for Chelsea game in a few weeks' time. Then Man United away tough. Arsenal having a blip. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm going to touch on the fixture run a bit later, but obviously we came into this fixture run, which for me started against Aston Villa because they were on good form before us. Let's fall down the army. But yeah, um, Villa obviously at the time were the second most informed team, so it started then. And you know, we came out of it with six points. And to be fair, before this run, including Villa, Tottenham, Man United. Arsenal and Chelsea five. If you said six points from that, I, to be fair, I would be quite. I'd be quite happy to be fair because before, before Villa, we, we were in such a mess. But you know, look how think look look how quickly things have changed. You know, we're right back in there now, and um, you know we're, we're on the up. Didn't see what you said. Say, yeah, it's one of them really. I think just like I said a few minutes ago, Leicester really really targeted that left hand side, and Tete still did his job. Um, just couldn't. Maybe not as much space in behind. I think against Villa, we played a bit. To be fair, though, we did, we did, we did play on the counter quite a lot. But uh, it's one of them, really. Hopefully, he can get back in there against United. I was watching Spurs reaction. Um, yeah, they, they, they did get battered. Um, lovely stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Hello, Alfie, mate. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, my cam roll. Yeah, to be fair, say I need to, I need to transfer them onto this. Um, it's good for me, though. There's, there's, there's loads of pictures to use on thumbnails and stuff. Uh, Tete is great. Um, I felt he didn't chase the ball enough and run enough yesterday. Um, I thought it was alright. I I I think oh, m- most of you guys probably were at the game and watched the full thing, so you probably know more 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 than me. I've only watched the highlights, but um, yeah, fair enough. Uh, Faz and Suter, awesome and Magic. Um, Mendy Christian and Magic Mendy. Sorry, Christensen is a Viking. Good way to put it. But um, yeah, back onto this then. We'll talk about a bit more tactics. Um, let's have a quick look at Leicester's shot map from the game. Um, so as we can see, we had a lot of shots. So many shots in that game, especially round 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 the edge of the box. Look, look here, there's you know three, four, five, so about seven here, just on that left hand side, and that's coming from the likes of Barnes as well. A long one from here as well. But the key thing for me is, you know, we we it's it's not like we you know scored four goals and you know we only had a few shots. We battered them, fifteen shots, seven on target, six off target in there as well. Expected goals was only one point six, but who really cares about that one? But yeah, we just dominated Tottenham throughout the whole game. Tottenham had a, a bit more possession by barely anything, a few more passes in there. Um, Leicester with quite a few long, long um, longer balls in there as well. So, you know, it's always interesting to see how the game's turning around. But, but this thing here is quite key for me here. 26, 27 tackles compared to Tottenham's 10. And for me, that's massive. And that's what I want to see because, you know, in recent weeks, Leicester seems to be second to best absolutely everything. But, you know, from that game, you can see Leicester are winning the second ball, so pressing high up the pitch, and that is the key to, to success, I think, because especially under under Brendan Rodgers, that's how he likes his team to, to, to set up. High pressing, win, winning the ball back, turning things over, and that's when Leicester play best. I think, you know, if Leicester have too much time on the ball, yes, at times we, we can score good, 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 good goals with it, but Leicester play best when we move the ball quickly and we don't have to spend... 10 15 passes, you know, a few passes. If you look at the Ian Atcher goal to what was it? Yeah, I think, yeah, but you could look at both of them. The obviously the Madison goal to make it 2 1 and the Ian Atcher goal to make it 3. You know, it's a few passes, it's defensive clearances and tackles, and you're in. So it's as simple as that, really. And obviously, Sutar and Wu played massive parts in both goals. Obviously, um, Balfaz played the tackle for I think it was the Madison one, and then yeah, I was Sutar played the long ball forward for the Ian Atcher goal. But bear, bear, bear in mind, Ian Atcher was. Absolutely fantastic yesterday. 
It was proper twenty. It was proper twenty 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 one vibes. I think is that the right year? I think it is, isn't it? Um, it's a it's a shame uh, that Justin. I don't know. I think I, I've never really. I never. I'll be honest. I, ne- I never really liked Justin. I, 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 I won't lie. So I can't like if I Christian so I can't like that Nacho man. Yeah, and yeah, but that's the thing. Um, the only thing I'll say with that though, I don't know about all of them because I just think that with, with Tete there who can run in behind, that's a, that's a, exactly what Leicester needed because you know if we played, say we played Madison right or Dennis Pratt on the right or Perez. They don't really want. They don't really want to want to go in behind. And if you've only got Barnes being the option of coming in behind, because obviously he actually doesn't really like like to run in behind. He can at times, but he prefers to drop deep, link the play, and run towards goal himself. Um, and, and you know that's what's best at. And with Tete and Barnes now with more options in behind, it just works to Ian actually strengths a lot better. And you know he's providing the goods once again. So and I think that that's what Ian actually worked quite well with Vardy alongside him. So obviously Vardy had that pace. In behind, we obviously had Barnes on the left as well, etc. So, Suto was brilliant, 100%. He's came in, he, he settled in very, very, very quickly, which um, is class to be fair. Um, we definitely get top seven, maybe we can, but yeah, overall, I think the new signers have all been absolutely excellent. I'm gonna get a quick break. Um, I need to get some water and blow my nose because I'm on the ropes right now, but yeah, the new signings have all been absolutely excellent. Uh, excellent, I hope they can continue. <laughs> that the transfer business has been absolutely absolutely fantastic in january and um hopefully if the summer can be anything like that it's all good but yeah uh top seven that's that's going to be a push and a half but uh i i, I back the confidence and the optimism uh natural such a yeah it's, it's exactly that and that's part of the team really barnes is a very confident player as well you know we've seen how quickly a few goals can do in the world of good he was desperate to score he said that he said that in, in his interview Unlucky not to score two, in my opinion. Obviously, VAR had an absolute mess of a weekend, and I don't really know why he was offside for the for the first goal he scored. But there you go. Um, Kane was smothered. Uh, we can beat anybody. Hundred percent. You know, if, if we play any, if we keep that performance level, which in my opinion is probably the best we've played all year. And of course, I don't watch the game, but uh, I think overall that's probably the best we've played all year. Maybe on par with Forest, but I think obviously Tottenham are, are better are better than Forest. So. I think all in all, a clean sheet would have been nice, but I think all in all, that's probably the best we've played all year. Uh, it's the best result, I think. Um, also, just like I said, we beat Forest 4 and we beat Wolves 4 and as well. But I think, you know, on par, we just dominated that game. I think Wolves, I think Wolves away, we didn't really dominate it did, um, like that. And he was, yeah, yeah the, the goal he had actually scored, the one before half time, I don't know what he was doing, Dyer. It was dreadful, weren't he? Um, Hello, mate. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing all right. Uh, Brendan asked to be backed, and hey, 100%. And that's the thing. I, I think we can all admit that this squad, you know, was very, I don't know. We, I think we could all say that it just needed a change. It, it needed a spark of something because it just seemed to be very, can't think of the word for it, but it was very, um, oh, I can't I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Uh, Tete needs uh, time to be 100%. I think it's obviously Christensen and Sutar. I expected them to settle in a bit more because obviously Christensen's got that um, experience in the Champions League. Um, I think the Danish league's quite it's not similar to, to to the Premier League, but the physical side of it is quite similar. And I said it when he signed. You see a lot of Danish players play in in the Premier League. So obviously Sutar just coming from the Championship. So yeah, uh, Leicester. There we go. Uh, our defense is on fire. Happy to see Ricardo back as well. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I think Gestandia is an interesting one, though. Obviously, he had that weird thing with Ward where he tried to flip and score an own goal, but he's, 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 he's letting off Woot, isn't he? But yeah, I, I don't know about Gestandia. I still I still see a bit of a flaw. Um, I, I thought he was all right, but I think he was not one of the best players on, on, on the pitch. And I think that kind of restricted Tete a bit. Um, yeah, what would you guys do? Ricardo or Gestandia? I, don't, I think for Man U, it was a bit early for, for Ricky, but after that, Let's say Ricardo's fit, hopefully he is. Who would you guys go with? I think Christensen set in stone at left back, but Ricardo or, or Castagna? Let me know in the chat. Um, 
Uh, on the way to the Saints, uh, Jones' sack isn't great because uh, of a new manager. Um, yeah, hundred percent. I'm going. I'm going to Southampton as well. By the way, I, I've I've been persuaded to get some tickets, so I will, I will be at Southampton in a few weeks as well. So that should be fun. Bill. Yeah, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, Ricardo and Christensen. Uh, there we go. Gray's already got in there with that. Uh, Cal was. So, I, I know he's so casual about it as well. I think quite. I think Barnes was quite casual about it as well. I don't know if it was Foster and goal, but. I don't know, the Barnes of the Yacht show, third and fourth goal, seem to be so relaxed and just placed in the corner with bees. It's weird, isn't it? JJ, yeah, it'd be tough for him to, to, to get back in. Uh, uh, Sport Justin was bad in 29, has become class. I don't know, mate. I really don't know. I think start of the year, I think, I think don't get me wrong, before the World Cup, he was good. I think start of the season, he was very poor. Um, 20, the, 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 the year we won the FA Cup, he was good. I, I, I'd give you that, but I just think based on the start of the season, I, I don't really rate him this, this year, to be fair to you, mate. Uh, Justin is injury prone. Yeah, it's the same as Ricardo, though, really. Um, I honestly think how, how United played against Lee today, uh, they didn't play, yeah, they 100%. They're all over them, and how we played this uh, against Spurs will destroy them. Yeah, I think it's difficult to really base on Leeds though, because obviously it is a it's, it's it's a rivalry. It's quite a, a heated game, but yeah, I wasn't really too impressed by Manchester United today. Of course, they grabbed the two goals on, on the break towards the end, but you know, it's just about the thing is though, if we can see early against United, it, it, we, I think it'd be a bit more difficult to kind of turn it around. But yeah, I think we, I think the players will will be full of confidence. There's no shame in losing there. The pressure's on Manchester United to win. Um, obviously, we've got two crucial wins so where there's some breathing space between us and the relegation zone right now so you know there's no pressure on Leicester on Sunday and we, see, we just need to go there put in a, a solid performance and see what happens really um, I think a point but a point would be a, a fantastic result yeah I, yeah 100% I think I think uh, yeah I was gonna I was gonna mention this uh, earlier Dakar what happened to Pats and Zaka? I'll, I'll get into the Castano Picard a bit in a minute it's going through the chat but Dakar as well how does he get back into this team? I think Vardy is a bit more set in stone, really, because obviously he's getting, he's getting older. But Daka, I don't know. It's going to be very difficult for, for Daka to get back in, in, into this team because Ian Atcher is on flames right now. Christensen, um, yeah, 100%. Fan favourite already. Um, Tottenham fan in there, Zach. Fair play for coming in. Um, fair play. Um, their goal was, yeah, it was one of them, really. I think it's just unlucky, really. Yeah, just like you say, they taught, reacted quicker and um, simple as that, really. Mm, I don't, I, what, when's the last time Ward made a serious, serious mistake, though? He's not the, I'll, I'll, I'll say, yeah, he's not fantastic, is he? But he's not, he's not that bad. I don't think he's that bad. Ricky P all day, Ricardo, Ricardo, Ricardo. Yeah, you guys know it. Ricky P. Um, yeah, that that that's obviously true in there as well. But yeah, I think you know, let's say Ricard- and Ricardo's um, fit. If we play it, I think we do. So Leeds poor in the final third. Yes, yeah, it's it's, just, it's, just, it's the tail of the it's the um, tail of the season really. We we're just awful. Everyone was awful. We we're probably going to get smashed by AC. But Tottenham's a weird one. They're, they're, they're obviously they're, they're very inconsistent. They beat Man City the week before. Um, so you, you you never know, but. Yeah, I just think defensively, you guys were. Uh, you just you seem to make it far too easy. You get you have the actual too much time. So, yeah, I don't know. So, do you know I need to watch. I, need, I do need to watch the full game. Um, Dak not good enough. Yeah, I agree. Um, Leeds Man United is the example of manager out next game boost. Uh, need to watch Saints on that. Expect us to win, but I don't think it'll be a very easy game with the fresh. Yeah, it's it, it's it, it's the same with most clubs, but. Apparently Jesse March is linked with Southampton, which is um, which is interesting. But I think you know it will be a tough game with St Mary's. But in my opinion, Southampton are down and out. So I saw someone on Twitter: Southampton needs to win fifty percent of their of their remaining games to probably stay up. So yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult for for Southampton now, isn't it? I think Nathan Jones um, has pretty much got them relegated. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't think he's played for. Um, uh, OH11, yeah, but that, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 I think, yeah, he actually is better than me. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that, but yeah, but caught back up with, with, with the chap, yeah, Dak on the left, I, I don't think so. Um, he's not good enough on, on, on the ball, in my opinion. Um, he doesn't really have the ability to, to take on a man either, but I think with Dak, uh, he's, he's clinical in front of goal, but 
he has to get good service and, and that's the thing really I think you know with Ian Atcho in the team right now it just helps Leicester tick a bit more because he can come a bit deeper and it can provide that out ball a bit more as well and then he can link up with with, with lots of Madison I just sort of said a few times that he got Barnes and Tete running got Christensen who seems to be always there as well so um yeah Benton Court is that for the rest of the season which is just great uh to be uh to be fair if you look play over against us you could win do you mean against United? Yeah, it's unfortunate with the Benton core uh, it's ACL, isn't it? As Leicester fans know exactly how that one feels, but um, hopefully he can recover for you guys because I think I, I don't mind Benton core. I think he's a good player. I agree they are down and out like Bournemouth did. Uh, they have a couple of good games. Yeah, it, it's 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 exactly that. I think relegation. We still need to be a bit rare. I, don't, I know I know we just won the last two games, but you know teams around us are, are winning. It's always going to be there, but. Yeah, we just, we just need to keep picking up the points. We can accept a few losses here, here, here and there. It's going to be, it's going to happen where Leicester do lose a, a stupid game to the likes of Wolves or I don't know Crystal Palace or Bournemouth or someone like that. So, you know, we just need to we we, we need to be careful. But as long as we keep on grinding out the these results, putting in the good performances, I think I, I think we're fine really. So, um, also later on, yeah, we do, yeah, we, we do actually. Hopefully, get them out of the Champions League all summer. Can't wait for the game on Wednesday. Arsenal Man City will be a good game. Merseyside Derby tomorrow. And you got the Champions League. You got Euro. You got Barcelona. Oh, yeah, that's a good point, actually. Barcelona and they play Manchester United on Thursday as well. So, you know, I reckon we have got a good chance against them. They're missing Casemiro. So, all in all, um, adding up to being a good, a good chance for Leicester to, to get in a win. Um, or, or at least a point. I'll definitely take a point at Old Trafford. We never do really do well at doing. Also, why so many fans at local here yesterday? Guess they all came off the train and headed there. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, I weren't there, so I don't really know. But um, yeah, I think that's it's, it's the, yeah. It's usually the counting house, isn't it, where where the away fans go? But yeah, I guess they just fought fought going down there with um near Nando's and stuff, weren't it? Uh, yeah, that's true. Put me in front of go off. I'll finish every day of the week. But um. Yeah, quick question then. Man of the match, or as I should say right now, play of the match in, in, in the modern day. And um, what was the best goal? It's tough. There's a few good finishes in there. Good team moves as well. But obviously, it's going to be Mendy. You know? I, don't, I, don't know why I, I don't know why I put that question in there just for, but obviously, it's Mendy. Yeah. I don't know, that's a stupid question. But yeah, I, th- I, think all, I think quite a few of the goals were, were good as well. The link up, I think the Barnes goal was nice. Um, Ian actually took his goal fantastically well as well. Um, but yeah, it's got it's got to be Mendy on it. Um, oh, there's two dodgy passes. Man of the match, Mendy. Man of the match, Mendy. Um, Cal cool finish. Yeah, I think Ian actually could could get shot for man of the match as well. Um, I think I think pretty much every single player had a solid game. Um, Sue Tom was immense at the back. Valfaz was good as well. Um, and that's the key, really. And that's and that's just what I want to see with Leicester. I just want to see that aggression getting in there, and you know. We've seen Suta, um, we coming in there, win, winning the ball back, springs a counter attack, goals, and that's why that is how we're going to win games this year. But yeah, let's just go back onto this. Let's see if we can look at anything else. Um, as we see, this is how the current league table stands after that win for Leicester. So, as we're talking, Southampton down there, 15 points, Leicester almost with a 10 point lead on them, so that is good to see. Um, I've just got Everton and Bournemouth down there as well. I think Everton will, will probably survive. Obviously, they've got Deitch now. They're looking quite good. Don't know what's happening here. Uh, the page is just refreshed. Let's go down. Thank you very much. So, for score, fantastic. But, um, yeah, back down to there then. you obviously got Leeds, West Ham, Wolves and Forest all around us. And, you know, Leicester are only, you know, four points away from Villa in the 11th. They're, they're not far from Liverpool. And, you know, I reckon we can push for around 9th for 10th, really. But it's just a case of, do Chelsea and Liverpool finally hit some sort of form and push towards towards the top four? Obviously, you've got Brighton and Fulham and Brentford, who are all looking very good as well. So, you know, it's close and a few wins for Leicester, and we are right back up then. You know, I'm, I'm going to bring the fixtures up right now because um, you know there is there actually isn't too long left of the season. Obviously, we are um, into the middle of February right now, so um, let's just get the quick fixtures up and see where we could get the points from. So, as we know, we've all spoken about it. United, Arsenal. Big game in the FA Cup where we need to win. That Southampton game should be a win. Chelsea's win of all. Brentford away is going to be a very tough one. Um, but this is where the easy games start to come up, as we can see here. Palace away, Bournemouth at home, Man City away is tough. Wolves, Leeds, Everton. And you've got Fulham away, which is tough. Obviously, that is where the season wraps up. But 
Yeah, this period of games here, you're right? Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, Wolves, Leeds, Everton, could may, maybe a bit Fulham. Yeah, if we can get some good, good results from them, that could ring springboarders up. That, that could be around 12 points there. Palace away, Bournemouth at home, Wolves at home, Leeds away, Everton at home. That's 12 points up, up for grabs there. You know, based on the form we're showing right now, we'll at least take about nine or 10, really. So, yeah, it's, it's looking positive. We just need to get through through these games against United. And, um, yeah, I, I think this, the end of the season is always going to be close. I think, you know, towards the end of the year, you always see some weird results. You've kind of seen that already. Arsenal are kind of falling off a bit. Man City are inconsistent. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it could, uh, it's, a lot could still happen. Um, <clears throat> and the goal of the day, again, Mendy first goal and Esther Colors. That's crazy. In the 2016, he's been there in his first goal. Madness. Barnes got it stood, uh, which is run off the ball. Yeah, hundred percent. And even yeah, and, and for the fourth goal, we had Christensen, which sucks a lot. Demanding that ball in there, and that is exactly what I like to see. Castanian Ward, yeah, I know that's stupid. It's crazy, right? Brendan for the way tough. Yeah, we scraped it last year against them, didn't um, last year? But yeah, I can't see he's getting a result there. Brentford, the, I think they're ten or beaten, aren't they? As well, crazy stuff. And not many people are talking about Brentford. So fair play to to them. Lot they're doing a, a fantastic job. Man United possible win, Arsenal possible draw or at least a blip. Blackburn easy, they off the pace. Saints win three one. Chelsea win, Brentford two two. Beat Palace. That I'll take that. Communication between Castagna and Ward. Yeah, that's a stupid one. Uh, Ward slash Castagna situation today is well. We missed Casper. I, I know, I, and exactly that, and, and, and nothing really happened after. They kind of just walked off. Yeah, I found the corner. So. Yeah, it's just the things like that we need to get out. We should just get out of the game. Just those basic, simple stuff. Someone needs to, to, to take control. And even so, I don't, I don't know what happened. Like, Castagna could have just easily turned around. There's no one near him and just got the ball up. But he kind of falls off balance and hits his leg and goes for a corner. Match. If that went in, that would be one of the, the most embarrassing goals I've, I've ever seen. But um, yeah, we're touching it a bit already. But yeah, next up, a trip to Old Trafford on Sunday, two o'clock kickoff on Sky Sports. I, I will be there, so hopefully the sports look can can bring the win. But um, yeah, it's obviously a massive game. We've mentioned it already a few times. I won't keep going over it. But yeah, they've got they've got Barcelona in midweek, so that's going to take a bit out, a quite a bit out, out out of United. That's an away game as well. So obviously they have got the travel. No Casemiro in there as well, so. Yeah, there's all the chance. If Leicester got a, a good chance of beating Manchester United away, this is the chance, I think. So, um, yeah, we'd go there, play our game, don't be imposed, don't don't give players like Rashford and, I don't know, um, I would say Sancho haven't really been playing, has he? But, you know, Rashford, Fernandez, don't don't give them too much respect and go out there, play our game, press them eye, and particularly press them eye because David De Gea can't, can't keep a ball to save his life. So, yeah, we, we need to really get up there and cause them some issues and press them up the pitch. And just like I said, press the hair and, and you're going to get some chances or, or at least to throw in quite high, high up the pitch. So, yeah, we need to um, we need to get, we need to do it. So, that has to be the game plan. I think Brennan Rodgers will, will realise that and look to do it. I don't think there's much point in him to go in there and sitting back and defend him because we will concede in, in the end, I think. So, yeah, just go out there, play our game and hopefully we can away with it. Yeah. Uh, Show our fans, of course, yeah, I will. I'll try and make that video one of the best ones um, possible, really. I'll spend a lot. I'm, I'm going on the train as well, so it should be uh, quite a, a rowdy one. Of course, got some Stone Island as well. Ooh, but, um, yeah, obviously, I'll, I'll be at Southampton as well. Hopefully, beat Blackburn, FA Cup quarterfinal, beat that to Wembley. So, yeah, hopefully, some good stuff on the way. We can get something 100%. I'm um, from Canada. I've been watching for five years. Wow. Uh, thank you for that, um, Jerry, mate. Thank you for watching. Good to hear that. But yeah, I obviously been doing this for for a while now, and I've got um get that badge in. Um, new Stoner, yeah, Stoner, get that badge in. Some no, no one's gonna come near me at Old Trafford. Absolute weapon. But yeah, boys and girls, that is where we're gonna wrap things up tonight. I've gone on for long enough. We've dissected this game quite a bit. Um, I might try and and um another stream in the week. If, I can't really imagine anything to be happening, really. So, I'll probably see you boys next weekend for the Manchester United preview. Um, obviously, Sunday is game day. The vlog will probably be out this time next week. So, 
get ready for that. It should be a very, very, very good match day vlog, hopefully so. Uh, and then obviously we keep going with the content. And then obviously we've got a few more games. We've got Blackburn coming up, Arsenal in the league as well, Saints away, that sort of thing as well. So yeah, let's get into the chat. Amateur bad. To be fair, I'm quite inexperienced, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see. De it's, it's, it's time for the debut at Old Trafford, the big one. I've been watching since June. Big up, big up. Not that long. Yeah, to be fair, la last year I didn't really do many streams, so I think just do, do, doing the streams obviously it saves time for me as well. I don't, I don't really have time to sit down, record, edit, etc. So just a bit easier, really. Uh, cheers, great Matt. Thanks for coming in as always. That is the plan. Yeah, I'm off the uni um, in September doing journalism, so. Hopefully so. And uh, cheers, Jeremy, as always. Thank you for coming in. And uh, yeah, there we go, now, boys and girls. Just for your head off, go and drop a like. It massively helps the channel out, as I do say. It helps spread the stream out to more Leicester fans around the world. And um, yeah, we can keep growing this community up as well. So yeah, big, big, big up to you, boys, as always. Massively appreciated. And I'll see you next week for Manchester United away back in the Premier League. Yeah, what a win. And our Leicester back. We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, eight goals in two games. Good stuff. Another three points, and you know, top top and get battered everywhere they go.